So, guys, uh, this afternoon we're going to quickly look at Module 4, the section about distributing use case behavior to analysis classes. Now you will see the presentation is here. <coughs> Good. There is there. And the walkthrough is there. Now, some of the things I want to highlight from the presentation, this is just a matter of getting for us getting objects to collaborate. What is the point of having just one class or one object who's trying to do everything? It's going to become too fat, too big to do, really be useful. If you want to extend it later on, it's going to become difficult. So what we're looking at is we're going to look at how do they need to collaborate. They need to work together. If I want to visit you, what do, we, wh what do I need to do? I need to ask you, hey, uh, when can I come and visit you? It's not like one guy that knows everything and come up there and so on. So what are we seeing is that we seeing that objects need to co uh, collaborate unless they are but useless. So that is happening through messages. They are passing messages wrong around to get things done. Now, message is the specification of communication among objects that convey information with the expectation that some activity is going to ensure it's going to happen. Okay, so one object asks the other object to perform an object operation. Objects communicate with messages thereby. So what we're we seeing is we are getting to a place of creating a sequence diagram. What is a sequence diagram? It's really a timing diagram. It shows to us who's doing what, when. I have my actor here, I have my boundary class, control class, some entities, but Who's starting the use case? Normally it's the actor. What is the actor doing? He might be clicking or doing interacting with the boundary clause. And then from there we need to go and ask the controller to go and tell it, okay, he has now done this. What needs to happen next? Okay, so that is really what we're seeing from this. Um, uh, sequence diagram, so the anatomy of the diagram looks as follows. We are having lifelines, these lines that goes down. Now, they may be stereotyped and be given different names, and this one is saying client, form, order, controller. Now, you might have your message coming in from the actor. Then we have this block. It's called execution of currents. It means that at some point that thing is going to execute. And then we have an event occurrence. Some event is now going to happen and continue there. We might also have a reflexive message. A reflexive message means that this operation is only happening inside this object. And what we're also seeing is, is a form of hierarchical numbering which is used. So we're starting at 1, 1.1, 1, 1.1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. okay. And then there's also these interaction occurrences. What is that? This is now places where we're starting to have a reference block, where we're adding an include and extend and subflows in these blocks. Okay. So when we're looking at this, for each of our use case flow events, we need to identify the analysis classes. Then we need to allocate our use case responsibilities to the responsible analysis classes, and then model our analysis class interaction in some interaction diagram. Okay. So if we are to do this, you'll see the walkthrough is now also taking us through this. What are we seeing from this? Again, it's tackling the sequence diagram's purpose, the different notation components. So if we're looking at the actual creating of the diagram, there's a nice frame we place around it. And as part of the label, it just says is the uh, sequence diagram and then the name of the diagram which we're going to model. Then we're going to place in the lifelines going down. Lifelines being the, the objects of the classes we're using. And uh, 
from this we can see that a lifeline can be named in such an extent that we have our object to the left of the colon we see the object name and in the actual class name from which this object is derived so on the order of our lifelines it will normally be the actor then your boundary class control class some any number of entity classes then there may be another boundary class and your actor okay. now what you need to note is that your entity class won't directly go back to your actor how how is he going to go to the actor he's going to firstly go back to the controller and then from there to the boundary class there's no none of them will directly communicate with the actor have you ever been electrocuted by a system when it wants to talk to you <coughs> it would be a very badly designed system okay it, it can rather have lights and uh, screens and so on but it's not gonna uh, you don't have a place where you plug into the system okay now what are we seeing at some point they speak about how do we identify messages and uh, uh, then there's a guidelines on identifying messages between the actors the boundary classes control classes and our entities but we'll look at that now also. Then we can also identify some guard conditions um, on the, the actual messages. So for example, yeah, we have add student. So they must, they, there's a guard condition which was passed, the new balance is equal to zero. So the condition for, for adding a student means that your balance must be zero, meaning that you should not owe anything. Now we can also have then con these fragments and frames. Now there's different frames which is available. This one is saying there's alter it's an alternative frame, meaning we have an option here and almost like an if else condition. If something is gonna going to happen, if my balance is greater or equal to the amount, then this is happening. Otherwise, the bottom portion is happening. Now this you might later on get in design where you might be modeling multiple scenarios. Otherwise, it's nice and easier to keep on modeling just one scenario and um, to make it a bit simpler. In design, you might now start placing these alternative flows uh, and options together. You will see there's also one for an option, pass the balance equal to zero, then this will happen. We can even have loops. So with the loop one, there's also a condition which is placed uh, while another report is equal to true. It's going to go and do this repeat repeatedly. Hmm. Now we can also reference other sequence diagrams. So for example, here's a reference block where we're calling another um, frame or another sequence diagram which is called into it. That is where you might be using subflows or even include and extend use cases where you now calling on them. So as part of this, they are giving us a bit of a class diagram saying, but we have a place order form, a controller, item, a order, and a customization option. This is based on a use case which comes from a food system where we'd like to now place an order. Okay, so if, if we had to develop a sequence diagram for this, what are we seeing? The, what lifelines are we going to have? What will be our first lifeline? Okay. 
also first lifeline, still our active. Okay. Now, your first lifeline, as we said, is going to be an actor, it's still represented by his stick figure, and the name in this case is the customer. What lifeline is he going to interact with? The boundary clause. So in this case, it was called a place order form. So place order form, and then we have the place order controller. Now, then we might have order and items. So when you start to develop the sequence like you know, <coughs> what inputs do we are we going to use to develop this? We're going to use our specification documents which we develop. So from this, what can I see? What is the first step that starts the use case? You see at the beginning in step three, it says this use case starts when who? The user, the customer cashier, select to place an order on the main menu of the self serve fast food menu. So what are we seeing? Who's doing that? The customer. On what is he interacting? So what is he doing? He's placing the order, and now again we're going to have this focus of um, that event occurrence or focus of execution occurrence block. Now, what is happening next? Let's go back to the specification. The system retrieves the items on special which the store has for the period of day or week. Then the system displays the order option screen. Okay. Now, what communication are we seeing next? We said the system needs to retrieve the items on special. Now, we know that where's the item information captured? Yes, it's in the system, but where in the system? If we want to retrieve this portion, uh, the items on special, where do we need to go? We have the, we, the, the order and item there. 
and they are entity classes, meaning that they store some data. So to which of them do we need to go? We need to go to the item. And then what needs to happen next? The system is now going to go and So, yeah. place order was selected. What is happening next? The system needs to retrieve the items on special. Retrieve specials. Oh, display specials. Okay. okay. So what you need to see is that what we're doing is we're taking the use case specification and we're looking between what are we communicating. You're always seeing either the actor is communicating with the system and if he's communicating with the system, is he, he's communicating with the boundary class. Because that is his medium to get into the system. Okay. If the system is displaying some result to the user, how is the system going to do it? Is the system ever going to do this? Okay, remember my question about have a system ever electrocuted you? How does the, can the system directly communicate to you? It can't. It interacts with a medium which you as a user can see or hear and use that to interact with the system. So you will never see this happening. Any questions to develop a sequence diagram? So, while it is so clear, how many sequence diagrams can we develop for this use case? A lot of times if we ask you to develop something, it may say to you, go and develop the buy an item scenario sequence diagram then you need to go and look under scenarios and say okay how many flows are we talking about we're just looking at the basic flow but if we if we asked you to go and develop the customizing order item scenario then it means that at some point you are going to have a portion of your basic flow you might jump out to an alternative flow and then the use case finish. So what we're seeing is that the customizing order item was a alternative flow here. But for to do that, we would have gone through a big portion of this. And then it would have jumped out to an alternative flow. And then it might have come back to the basic flow again. So where that big line is our basic flow, we might have had an alternative flow which we went and performed and it jumped back to that place, or even a specific place. Okay. So that means that we, we could have developed any number of sequence diagrams for our system so that we've identified all the necessary operations which we might have had. Any questions, guys?
erklären. Okay. Then you must enjoy your office.